I grew up in Hollywood. I grew up in the movie business. My father was a studio executive for something like 45 years. My mother was his secretary for a while and then became his story editor. And she ended up typing scripts for Preston Sturgis and working with some extremely important people in the movie business when she and my father lived in New York. So I grew up here. Uh, my father was a studio executive at Paramount Pictures. Um, I spent every Friday night of my life that I can remember as a child on the Paramount lot seeing movies in the executive screening room. Um, so it's very hard to remember the first movie I saw because it's sort of like asking, when, when did you first eat solid food? I don't have any time, memory of a time when I wasn't seeing movies. Um, I know I saw Sabrina, the original Sabrina, um, in that executive screening room. I know I saw some like it hot there. I know I saw North by Northwest there. Um, I know I saw Rear Window there. Um, and so those were some of the ones that really excited me. But I went to the movies all the time. I went with my friends. I went with my brother. I went to the Lorena Theater in Encino, which, of course, isn't there anymore, and the Studio City Theater, which, of course, isn't there anymore. And sometimes my brother and I would take the bus into Hollywood. I don't even know if my parents knew that on Sunday afternoons. And I think the movie that probably had the biggest impression on me as a child was South Pacific, which was one of those movies that he and I saw um, on Hollywood Boulevard. It was the first time I really understood the power of movie making, of what could happen when you combined serious drama, outrageous comedy, musical numbers, the death of a leading character. I thought that was against the law to kill off somebody that you liked in a movie. I was stunned when that happened. And I was aware, even then, even as a child, of the structure of that movie, of the the power of a guy who shows up at this place and somebody says, oh, you want to go to Bally High? And he says, no, I have a job to do. I'm going to go over here and do this. And then in order to do that job, he has to get the help of Emil. But Emil's falling in love with Nellie. And so Emil says, no, I'm not going to do the job with you. And because he says no to him, the first guy can go back to Bally High. There's a, there's a ballet in that movie between yes and no that I was really aware of as a child. And the, the structure of that ending that allows you to think that Emil is dead, so the power of when he turns up alive... Oh, man. <laughs> there isn't anything more exciting than that.